Hey guys, I just watched a really interesting video, which I will link down below. She made a little needle cushion for her needles. Um, she doesn't like working with a pin cushion. She has a bowl of pins. I like my pin cushion, but I don't always like to have my needles in my pin cushion. I don't know. It's just a thing. And I don't carry this around with me. Sometimes I just take my muffin tin full of parts for the project I'm currently working on downstairs or somewhere else in the house with me. Um, I don't want to take the whole pin cushion at the same time. There's a bunch of needles in here and I'm always dropping them all over the place, to be honest. I could use something that either sticks into the spool of thread or there are some holes in the muffin tin. So I took a, uh, I don't think this is a chopstick. It's just some kind of skewer. It might be a chopstick. I had it in my salvage bin. I cut the end off. This is about an inch and a half long. And I drilled a little hole in the end of it. I sanded, I sanded where I cut it a little bit and I drilled a hole in it. Then I cut a circle of muslin that's one, two, three, four, about five inches across. And we're gonna run a little runny stitch around the edge. If you hear noise in the background, it's because my uh, husband, of course, is home. Hello, hello, pandemic. Um, and the laundry is working downstairs. I didn't bother to close the studio door, so I did put a knot in the thread. So we're gonna just go all the way around the edge. And I've seen these kind of things before at the store. You probably, probably somebody manufactures one that you could just buy, but when you have a room full of art supplies, sometimes it's more interesting to make do with what you have than to go buy the store-bought thing, right? All right, so we got all the way back to where we started. Now it looks like this. I'm gonna gather it just a bit. I'm gonna fill it with stuffing. Uh, normally I would use some of the cabbage, the cut up fabric, but because we're gonna be sticking um, needles in this, and some of the needles are a fine point, they might not stick in the cabbage very well. So I think the stuffing will be a little bit better. You want it firm, but probably not too firm. There's probably too much stuffing. We'll, we'll find out in a minute here. For some reason, I'm fumble thinkers today. I don't know. Put a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna pull that tight and tie it off. Before we go too far with it, I wanna run the needle through the hole in the little piece of wood and then I'm gonna run the rest of the thread through our little cushion I'm gonna stuff it like down in here oops and continue with it through the hole and through the um, fabric. I've got all kinds of crazy little bits on my table. 
I'm working on the slow stitch book, so we're going to decorate it a little bit. Okay, so you'll end up with something that looks like a little, little tree. Okay. So I'm going to... Oops. I'm always po poking at my fingertips and I'm always like, you know, you should really have a thimble on and I just never have one on. I know. I do know better. Okay, so now I'm gonna tie the thread in a knot. If I can untangle myself long enough, holy cow. Feels like Monday on Thursday. You guys ever have days like that? Or is just the pandemic like all of it days like that? I kind of feel like it might be the pandemic. If you're watching this in the future and you don't have any idea what I'm talking about, just Google the year 2020. You'll figure it out. So I'm going to run the thread end back through the cushion a little bit just to hide the end so it's not poking out and driving me crazy. And then I'm going to pull it a little, oops, a little bit and trim it. And then what happens is it just sinks back into the fabric and you don't see it at all. So now we just have that. I'm gonna grab some trim, which I have this one, which I think might look nice on here. Pins. This is exactly what she did in her video. There's no um, music or any, I mean, talking or anything, but you get the gist of what she did and why she did it. And I loved what she did. Go to her channel and watch her video. Her picture quality is probably a little better than mine. Uh, mostly because lately I've been filming with my phone, so I don't know what the rhyme or reason is beyond that, behind that, but anyway. She does a great job. And I'm gonna just pin my little bit of trim here. I've been watching a lot of lace making videos on YouTube lately. Not that I'm gonna be getting into lace making or anything, but I do find them fascinating. Of course, I also find dumpster diving fascinating and the audiology channel where they clean the crazy wax and stuff out of people's ears and Dr. Pimple Popper. So, you know, there's that. What kind of weird things do you guys like watching on YouTube? Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, so now I'm gonna start at that seam where I folded the lace over kind of on itself. And I'm gonna stitch the two ends together. except that I wanted to do that and hide the knot, which I just forgot to do. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay. So we're gonna come up from underneath. That way the knot will be under the lace. There we go. We're just gonna do a little, loop are we? Little teeny tiny, slip stitches. You could do something fancier. You could do bright colors. Um, you could stitch with embroidery stitches. I just want it to be kind of plain muslin with a little bit of lace. I want it to be pretty but functional. Once I get down to the bottom, I'm gonna run the thread. 
head uh, back up underneath to the top. Pull the needle up, but not too tight. And then we're gonna start stitching the lace down. And again, with small slip stitches, you can take the pins out as you go. I'm using um, quilting thread, which I found in my stash when I was cleaning recently that I kind of forgot I had. I think I bought it because I couldn't find buttonhole twist and I wanted some thicker thread to do hand stitching like this with. And it was what they had in this sort of off-white cream color. which I seem to use a lot. It seems to be the color, the color that I use a lot. Now we're gonna just go all the way around. I picked a piece of wood, whether that's a skewer or a chopstick or whatever, I'm not sure, that would fit in the whole of my spools of thread directly in the spool where are we directly in the spool hole in the middle um both of the new threads and the old vintage ones that i use i tested it in all of them also in the hole in the muffin tin because the muffin tin has a hole in it like i said earlier so we're going to need some more thread so we're going to tie oop, tie this off Okay, and then we're gonna take the thread and run it through and out the bottom like we did before. Pull it a little bit tight and cut it and that way the thread end disappears inside. And then we can just grab some more thread. I wanna show you something else that I did today too. I'm not sure if I talked about the little tiles or not. I think I did, but I want to show you the ones that I made. Okay, so there's a knot in the end of the thread. So now I'm going to figure out where I stopped, which was right about here. I'm going to go up from underneath of the lace about where I want the next stitch to be. And that should hide the thread end in the um, underneath part. Whether you do cross stitch or you do embroidery or you're into slow stitching or maybe you're a dressmaker, we all do some hand stitching once in a while. And she shows in her video how, you know, we normally just stick the needle in the top of the spool. And um, we've all done that. <laughs> so you don't know what to do with it in between sections of stitching. And when I'm slow stitching, I like to have a number of needles going um, with each different kind of thread so that I don't have to switch needles all the time. But then what do I do with the needles? Um, they do fit in the little... Um, pockets in the muffin tin, but sometimes I have to dig around in there because there's other stuff in those pockets like the floss and buttons and charms and um, little applique pieces I've made and finding the needle sometimes is a challenge. It'd be easier if there was just a little pin cushion on the side of the muffin tin that I could grab the needle out of. So I saw her video and went, aha, light bulb moment.
And when you get back to the beginning, tie it off in a knot. And then run the thread back through the bottom. And then give it a little pull. And there we go. And then it fits in the top of the cushion, in the um, spool, and you can see. And then you can have all of your I think that's all the ones I have over here right now. Oh, no, it isn't either. There's one more. See, I told you I'd lose track of them. Look. So then you have all of them like that. Or, hang on one second. Okay, this is the muffin tins from the dollar store that I use to carry um, the small bits and pieces downstairs that I'm using on whatever current slow stitching project I'm working on. I usually have um, four or five little compartments with different colorways of floss. This is all the beige and ecru stuff. Some regular sewing thread, buttons, yellow and orange floss, um, gray. These are the little appliques. I've got circles and hexagons. Oh, there's some pins in here, which shouldn't be in here. <laughs> um, I do sometimes have pins in here. Let's take those out. Um, I have some sticky thimbles. These are, um, I'll put the Amazon listing for these um, in the description below, but these are just little pieces of sticky leather and they're reusable um, for quite a few times before they lose their sticky. And you just stick them to the end of your pushing finger with your needle um, and they work really well. I do have a leather thimble, which I've been known to wear, um, but it's, uh, thimbles are just kind of big and bulky and I've never really been a big thimble user. So, but at the same time, you know, as I'm getting older, my skin gets kind of thin um, and my fingers get a little sore with all the stitching I've been doing. So these actually work really well. So those are there, but now I also have my needle keeper and I can just put it right there. How cool is that? So I love that. And I also can, if I have this spool of thread with me, I, that can just live here. So I love that, and I think that's a fabulous idea. Thank you to the YouTuber who um, did that video because I think that's wonderful. These are the little tiles I think I spoke about before um, from Handy Mom Lynn. Um, so she showed, do we have a piece of something? I can put this in here. So she showed a little wooden template she had that looked like this on her Facebook page, she actually showed a picture of it with measurements. It's about three centimeters across with half a centimeter frame all the way around. The center opening is about two centimeters. So that translates to about an inch and a quarter across and the opening's about three quarters of an inch-ish. So I made a couple of frames of my own out of hard plastic this morning. It did take me a couple of times to get them right. And so I thought it was so hard to do one. I thought, let me just do two just in case. Um, and her video shows how to make these, but with the templates and some of this hard um, interfacing, which I talked about before earlier this week because I made tags for my slow stitch journal at least I think I did. I don't know right now, but I make tags for my slow stitch journal out of this. Um, this is used, you can buy, find it by the interfacing at your fabric store, and it's used for, for making really stiff, hard fabric projects like fabric bowls. I use it for journal covers. Um, you can also make like fabric tags. I can't get that one out right now. I have a, the angle's weird. So fabric tags like this one I made for my slow stitch journal. And the base of it was a piece of this stuff. Um, it feels like fabric chipboard, for those of you that do mixed media and scrapbooking. Um, so anyway, I cut, 
per her directions, I cut a square of this stuff and then I, you basically cover it with fabric. And the results are, whoops, these little tiles, these little fabric tiles, just out of scraps. And she actually, at the end of the video, shows where she's sewn them together and made like a coaster and things with them, which is cute. I, I made six of them. They were fun to make just out of, you know, scraps I had laying around that uh, were probably going to get cut up in a cabbage if I couldn't figure out what to do with them. Um, so I'll be making more of them and then adding them to my slow stitch projects or maybe making a coaster, maybe a little bowl or a box or something. So now I've got a, yeah, square tiles. So fabric tiles. So anyway, and my desk, I keep thinking I'm cleaning my desk because I'm finishing projects, but I think it's getting messier. I think it's just getting messier and messier because you know, I've got stuff. <laughs> And there are watercolors over that way, and it, it, I want to work on that too, so I don't know. And I have some embroidery floss to wind. I did some organizing of trims and threads and things, but when I shared the pictures, the floss was just in bags in the drawer because I didn't have a floss winder. And if you've ever wound embroidery floss by hand, you know, it's a pain in the neck. So, embroidery floss winder. I think I had one years ago, and it broke, or I don't know. I stupidly probably thought I didn't need it anymore, so I got rid of it. So anyway, that's what I've been doing today on Thursday. What have you all been doing? I um, am toying with the idea, a couple of ideas for things for the Facebook groups and the channel. I said last week I'm toying with the idea of getting rid of my website or moving all the Etsy store to the website, which I think is, although Etsy is kind of expensive to run a store on, I think it's not cost effective to move the stuff over to the website. So I don't know how you all feel about that, but can you let me know? Also, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see on YouTube or over in the Facebook groups, let me know. I'm thinking about doing some live somewhere, whether in Patreon or Facebook. Um, in a place that will let me do them easily without don't downloading special software or anything because that's constantly a thing with YouTube. And we have to go grocery shopping and the husband said, oh, I'll go with you, which means we have to go after work, which means we're going to be with a late evening crowd. And yeah, I don't know. Since the apocalypse started happening, that's not my... I don't like grocery shopping before the apocalypse. I really don't like it now. So anyway, I'm going to take a couple pictures for social media so I can share my little needle cushion because I think that is the cutest thing on the planet. And uh, yeah, maybe make yourself a needle cushion. Go watch these two YouTube channels below. They have a lot of really great content, especially if you're kind of liking trying something new and trying slow stitching and incorporating some needlework into your or sewing into your mixed media. Um, there's no reason why a little bit of stitching um, can't be in your mixed media work um, and a little bit of fabric. Um, so, you know, it's always good to expand our horizons and give it a try. You might hate it, but, you know, you might like it. You never know. Don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff. Use what you have. If you don't have any needle and thread, maybe your mom does, maybe, you know, your sister does, and they're not using it anymore. Grandma, you don't, you don't spend a lot of money. Use what you have or see if somebody's got some stuff you can borrow or that they're not using that you can just have. Garage sale, go thrifting, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's it for right now, I think. I feel like I need a nap. <laughs> is it just the apocalypse? I don't know. At least my rash is going away. All right, that's it for the moment. I'll be back. Hey guys, the clips that you're just watching just now were originally filmed as far, part of a vlog for June of 2020. And I just thought there was so much of the content that might be interesting enough on a standalone. I'd love to see what you're doing. Do share it over in my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, if you're a member over there. If you're not, the link will be down below. 
Don't forget to support the free content here on Facebook and in the YouTube uh, Facebook art groups um, by uh, shopping in the Etsy shop or using the PayPal chip jar or joining Patreon or something like that. Not only for me, but for other artists that are providing free content. Um, the most important thing, of course, is stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.